You're listening to Seattle Real Estate Podcast. I want to start off by reading you a quick quote that I kind of think tells you what direction we're headed in with this podcast. So City Commissioner Hardesty down in Portland, Oregon. She's the one that couldn't pay her credit card bills on time. Bank of America sued. So do some other people. Yeah, not good with money, but she's the city commissioner, you know, handles a lot of the city budget. There's that whole thing. Anyway, federal workers suffering, the federal workers that are suffering is collateral or collateral damage of changing systems as Portland moves towards more equitable future, the city commissioner says. So, As the city changes, everything just becomes more crappy. Is that what we're saying? So as things are equitable, everything just becomes crappy is that looks, that looks to be the statement that city of um, Portland is saying. So the Portland city council meeting erupts over homeless encampment safety risks, which are an existential threat to business. It's what we're talking about today here on the Seattle Real Estate Podcast. Why are we talking about this on a real estate podcast? Because a lot of what's happening in Seattle has happened in Portland. You got the homeless encampment issue, people that are unhoused, living outdoors. Where do they go? Do we sweep them? Do we provide the services? How do we do that? Our governor here in the state of Washington just had a big meeting yesterday with all the chief honchos, and they're going to get together and talk about what they're going to do. And is anything going to get done? And we're on year seven of a crisis, an emergency of homelessness here in city, in, in Washington state, in, in Puget Sound area. And yet it just keeps getting worse. So don't really have any real plans in place. It doesn't look like. And we just elected a mayor here in Seattle that said he's going to do a lot, but it's been a month and, you know, we're coming up on a week, um, of his, of the new, new, uh, mayor administration. Uh, yeah, he's still getting his, getting the lay of the land, getting his, getting his feet wet, get, just getting on a solid footing to do some big things moving down. I don't know. Is that going to happen? Cause you know, the homelessness thing, when you let that go to the point that Portland has, Portland's off the hook. Let's be honest. Portland is off the hook. I don't know how many friends I've had say, man, Portland's bad. And I'm like, what do you mean? Well, I just drove through on the freeway. And if you're driving through on interstate five and you can tell how terrible a city is, that means it's bad, right? I mean, that's bad. If, if, if the city isn't controlling homelessness on a major federal highway, then what are you even doing? You know, the interior streets clearly are just a free for all. And that was one of the the major considerations with um, our governor here in the state of Washington. He was meeting with with leaders, um, Seattle mayor, and I think a Spokane city council person, they were talking about what do we do with the freeways and people living on the freeway systems? Because that's become it's become a, a big deal. In Portland, and we're going to read about some of the um, the federal workers, the federal employees, I should say, and um, we're going to talk about that. So let's jump on in and um, see what we got going on here. But I was going to do another podcast and something else, and this one came up, and I'm like, I got to do this one. Federal employees demanded Portland City Council address a homeless encampment outside their office that they say has created safety concerns, cost the agency hundreds of thousands in security measures, and it's become an existential threat to business. Some commissioners in the virtual council meeting promised that unspecified reforms were in the works. I will love you in the morning. The check is in the mail. Yes, yes, we can make this work. I promise if I am elected, this will happen. We're going to solve everything, right? I mean, doesn't it feel like that's kind of where we're at? But Commissioner Joanne Hardesty, who spearheaded the defund police movement in Portland, that should give you a clue, right? She argued federal employees were just feeling the effects of what she called changing systems. That means everything getting real crappy as Oregon's largest city ushers in a more equitable future. If this is the equitable future, yeah, I don't think most people want any part of it. I don't think the people living in the tents necessarily want anything, you know, part of it. But they're also whacked out on drugs for the most part that they don't know which way is up. 
And that's why it's the, you know, sane, reasonable people to come up with some solutions that are clearly not happening. Because if you go down to Portland, I mean, airport way, I mean, oof, yeah, not a good look, not a good look. It is literally a third world country look. You know what I mean? Just the blue tarps and just the crap everywhere. I, downtown Seattle, Denny Park. I, you know, shot a video on that, you know, before it was cleared out and got out of my car. Oh, yeah, there's some needles. I mean, that's just common. It's common and everybody knows it. Nobody's trying to hide it. People want to say, well, there's some people down on their luck. Yeah, there are. And there's some people down on their luck that aren't living on the streets. They are doing what they need to do to kind of get back on that path. A lot of the people that are living in these tents, this is a chosen way of life. Let's be honest. You got some drug addicts. You got some people with mental health issues. You got a combination of both. You got some people that just want to take advantage of free addle and, you know, Portland doing its thing. Just, well, oh, you need a clean needle. Here you go. Here you go. Enabling those lifestyles. That's the big, that's the big, do we do this or do we don't do this? That's the big thing. We're about ready to wrap up a, um, we've kind of done a little, I think it's about going to be about an 11 minute documentary on Andrea Suarez. We went with her, interviewed with her. My guy, my video guy has been taking, uh, he's got some really good footage, some crazy footage that Andrea has experienced. And she is with the nonprofit We Heart Seattle. And she's a concerned citizen that just started picking up garbage off the streets of Seattle and, and in homeless encampments. And then all the mutual aid gets really worked up and says, you're stealing the homeless people's stuff. This is stuff left behind in tents that's been abandoned for who knows how many weeks or months. And yet people still get worked up and say, ah, it's just crazy. That video should come out, I think, next week. And it'll be a good one. It'll be a really interesting one because Andrea has some interesting things to say. She's the gal that has picked up close to 400,000 pounds of garbage for the city, probably saved them around $5 million with the way that they spend money picking up garbage. And yet the city council and city leaders called her up and said, stop picking up garbage. Stop. Just leave it there. It's not yours to take. She wasn't following protocol. And so they started harping on her. Alexander B. Etheridge, a new Portland resident and associate director at the U.S. Geological Survey, told city commissioners how the environment outside the Oregon Water Science Center in downtown Portland has deteriorated. All right, this is a water science center, and you have got homeless encampment there. Okay. All right. The worsening encampment brings targeted crime against work trucks and leaves colleagues feeling a sense of despair from simply not feeling safe. That's what it said Wednesday. All right. So here is, here's the paragraph that I think kind of tells it all. Many of us are spending lots of time on band aid measures, such as creating emergency contact cards in case they get taken out on the job. Creating personal safety plan templates and documents or attending trainings with security professionals on how that they can stay intact and in one piece on their job as a federal employee at this center, right? Meanwhile, employees continue to feel that nothing will prevent an inevitable personal injury because of continued exposure to targeted crime. This is what's happening in the city of Portland. And the commissioner is like, well, you know, we're a liberal city and we've got some changes happening. And this is kind of just a byproduct of, you know, equity, equity, crazy. It's like, okay, why don't you actually do something? Why don't you do something? Why don't you clean up the streets, clean up this crap, figure out where you're going to put these people and start doing that. Instead, they just kind of, ah, we're overwhelmed. I don't know what to do. Don't know what to do. Other cities seem to handle it, don't they? Other cities do seem to handle it. We have got, and I need to do a podcast on it, in, in between Kirkland and Bellevue, there's a road called Bellevue Way, and it goes right through downtown Bellevue and Bellevue Square, which is kind of the premier shopping mall north of probably California and south of Vancouver, B.C., and um, just to the north of that, by a couple of miles, the King County has purchased La Quinta Inn, and they're going to turn that into a homeless shelter. 
Well, that'll be interesting because that's very close to West Bellevue and very close to Kirkland, two pretty upper end communities. Bill Gates only lives a couple of miles from there. Like you could walk there in half an hour, 40 minutes, something like that. So you're going to tell me that you're going to put in a homeless shelter and you're going to turn a hotel, a big hotel. And I've been in that hotel many, many times. When my grandmother used to come and stay, she would often stay at that hotel just so she had her own place and do her own thing. And so I know that hotel well. And um, yet you're going to turn that into a homeless, you know, shelter, you know, semi-permanent housing, however you want to say it. We'll see if that, we'll see how that goes over. Because you know, anytime you bring that element in, crime, it doubles. Literally, it doubles. So, so I'm saddened to see some of our lowest paid employees have to make some of the lo- biggest personal sacrifices to uphold our mission in the setting, Etheridge said. She described how workers employed to do community-based watershed scientific research must spend time documenting instances related to the camp in federal and city systems to prevent victim blaming if something awful occurred. So th- th- they're taking time out of their day And their work day, they're getting paid by the city to document crazy stuff going on in the homeless encampment in case something bad happens. Because elected officials in Portland won't do anything about it. They just won't. It was kind of like their response to the federal buildings during the whole hundred nights of, you know, hammering on the the federal building in downtown Portland. Um, that was just atrocious, that, uh, horrific, and and leadership. They might not, you know. You know what I hear a lot about is we we never we never encourage defund the police. Well, leaders in in Portland did. You know, maybe a lot of the, these Democratic leadership uh, folks they didn't come right out and say we are for defunding the police because a lot of this has to do with that you don't have enough cops to kind of do everything right to cover basic public safety functions but so many of the people in leadership positions when you had the 100 nights of destruction and that's what it was let's be honest it wasn't peaceful protest protesting it was destruction by the mob they didn't say anything so they might not have been for defund the police they might not have come right out and said anything there but the mob rules just tearing into cities, that was that was kind of where the line was crossed as far as not decrying that situation happening because nobody said anything. Nobody said anything from the left at all. It was just like, oh, well, you know, this is what we're doing. It's summer of 2020. You know, equity, you know, change is hard. And sometimes, you know, buildings get torn up and burned and, you know, statues get taken down because, you know, progress. This is very progressive. This is just go to Portland, see how uh, progress looks. It's not good. Yeah, it's not pretty. As a, So a recent survey by the Portland uh, Business Alliance found that 81% of voters in the city did not trust elected officials to effectively provide public services. So it, Portland's a city, and some would say would Seattle's a city, suffering from the same influences. Each is about 500 cops short of a full deck, full strength, authorized strength. 500 cops short. Ah, let's just let's just keep running the city. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, we've been we've been fine so far. Fine, things are fine until they're not, right? Hardesty responded to Etheridge's comments by acknowledging the pain in her voice and adding that there is not a corner of the city not suffering that same kind of pain. Well, if you're recognizing it, why don't you do something about it? You're the commissioner. Why don't you do something about it? Just do something. Do something in a positive direction other than saying, well, this is just kind of the way we're headed and, you know, changes sometimes, you know, they're painful and, you know, equity, uh, you know, literally equating equity to everything being crappy with people living in homeless encampments that are unauthorized, that are impacting federal employees. Wacky world we live in, isn't it? Yeah. But the commissioner then seemed to argue that those threats to public safety and the housing crisis were part of the necessity. Always blame housing crisis. Always blame that. Because that's this thing out there that we should be handling. 
but we're not. It's a housing crisis. It's not the people making the decisions to live in the homeless communities. No, it's not them. It's not the people who can't figure out, you know, their addiction to whatever. They can't figure out a solution there. Or maybe they're literally just not in a place where they should be living in the streets because they, you know, mentally can't handle it because they've got something going on. They need to be medicated, whatever. You, you know, let's not deal with that. Let's just let them roam around and live in tents because, you know, literally what could go wrong? Well, we know what goes wrong. It happens all the time. I mean, how many stories have I read from, you know, these chapters of the history in our cities until we get some leadership in there that um, says, all right, here's what we're doing. This is the game plan moving forward. Here It's go time, folks. It's go time. And there's going to be some pain there too, because some things are going to happen. Some things or areas are going to get cleaned up permanently and people aren't going to be allowed to do the same activities and behave in the same way in our parks that they've grown accustomed to in these very progressive liberal cities. It's okay. Needles down the down the slide. It's all right. I mean, you know, a kid might go to med school one day. He needs to learn how to handle a needle and someday, right? So um, the, the commissioner there seemed to argue that those threats to public safety and the housing crisis were part of the necessary growing pains that happen in a liberal city dedicated to social justice. I don't see anything in the way of social justice being done here. If there was, I'd say, okay, all right, I can buy that. I mean, yeah, there's a tweaked way to get there. Um, but I don't see Portland being dedicated to social justice. I see them being dedicated to Antifa, you know, allowing Antifa to have a hundred nights of just hammering on the city. I see that and growing pains. Okay, if we're growing, other than growing encampments throughout the city, I want to know what's growing. What what is wh where's the positive growth here? Because all I see is negative growth. I see things growing out of control and in a, in a direction that I don't think anybody wants, including Mayor Ted. And um, regardless of what Hardesty says, I mean, I think she should be working at the Department of Motor Vehicles, handing out your vehicle tabs. She's that kind of person. I mean, that's where her skill set should uh, should remain. Um, not as city commissioner, because clearly she can't handle money. We've proven that. And so, well, you know, Portland, what are you doing hiring? You know, what are you doing electing these people? So here's what Hardesty says. Let's lean in together because Portland is going to come back better and it's going to become more equitable and it's going to be more fair, Hardesty says. And by that, I would extrapolate that everybody's going to have a crappy situation. That's what I believe. That's how I interpret that. And I don't want to see that for the Rose City. No, Portland's cool. It's a cool city. I have a lot of good memories in, in Portland as a kid. As an adult, not, not, not so much. You know, you go to Portland? Oh, why? I mean, what are you going to do there? Well, I'm going downtown. I'm going to see this. Have you been following Portland at all? I mean, just be careful. Just, you know, it's like Seattle. It's like any down big, big city, but yeah, it's got some areas that are a little sketch. I mean, we'll sketch. And then you've got the, and then you've got Portland taking out the big page ads in uh, New York Times. Ah, come to Portland. It's quirky. We've had some growing pains, but you know, we're working our way through them. So make sure you come on down. No, I don't think so. So yeah, kind of like um, City of LA. Oh, we've got the Super Bowl this weekend. We need to clear some of this crap out of here. We need to, we need to clean these streets up. This looks terrible. We can't have people come into our house and looking and seeing, you know, it's like, you know, you hate to say it, but dirty underwear on the floor, right? That's the worst. That is gross. As somebody who spent 35 years, 30 something years going into people's homes to do appraisals, you see some just difficult living situations. And dirty laundry strewn, strewn throughout is one of those ones where you're like, okay, could have gone all day without seeing that. Or, you know, a pet that just poops everywhere and that kind of thing. And just general living conditions. Sometimes it's awesome. You've got a $10 million home and you're like, oh, wow, this is, that's, a, that, that's a cool house. And then other days you, you roll up to the house that somebody hasn't done laundry for months, if ever it appears. Do you just buy new clothes and not wash your clothes? Is that what we're doing here? Because it seems like the way you've got it strewn around the three rooms around the utility area 
seems like that's what's going on. And the famous last words of people were like, oh, I forgot you were coming. And they look around, you know, they look embarrassed behind them. You're standing at the front door. You're shaking their hand back before COVID saying, I'm Sean Reynolds from Reynolds and Klein Appraisal. I'm here to do the appraisal on your home. I'll start in by measuring the exterior. I'll be inside in 15 minutes. And the person will embarrassed say, and you're looking past them going, what a, you know, what hole, what a crappy house. But you don't say that because you're objective and you're a professional. And the homeowner says, if I would have known, if I would have remembered you're coming, I would have cleaned this place up. And you're like, good luck with that. I called you on Monday. It's Thursday. We're doing the appointment. No chance you would get this house clean. No chance at all. So you both giggle and go, okay, yeah, well, I look past that. You know, I'm a trained professional and I don't count dirt. I, I always threw out the dirt's personal property, isn't it? People go, ha, 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 yeah, I got lots of it. And you, you know, you just have those awkward interactions with strangers because you're going into their home. You're going to see their dirty laundry, which they are apparently not aware of. So the people that, you know, keep their house clean, two thumbs up for you. You make life easier for appraisers because it's all, it's all about us, right? I mean, as a, you know, no. It's people just live in different ways, right? Some, uh, some are okay with, uh, progress, meaning that situations might go a little south on the way to being more fair and equitable. Some of those terms, I kind of just uh, think that they are nice ways of explaining it's all going to get real crappy. It's the way I see it. I don't see it any other way. And, um, and progress, very progressive, just not in the right direction. All right, that's it for me on this one. Thank you so much for being here. I will catch up with you very soon. Until then, stay safe. We'll talk again. Bye for now.